Thanks very much, uh, Paul and Lucy. We're um, pretty joyed to be here. We like sharing our deals. We do, um, we've got a few different businesses we do, but one of them is renovation projects. And basically, we, we concentrate on, with investors, JVs, just doing quick flip renovations, turning them over, quick chunks of cash, uh, getting the cash back and doing it again. Uh, and that's, we, we basically do a lot of that business in Townsville. So we do other small developments in Brisbane, but uh, the renovations up in Townsville. So this is one we did uh, at the end of last year. We actually, I don't know, was anyone at the Brisbane Property Network Group in January? No, good, so no one's seen this before. <laughs> we did this presentation. That we, we've done, uh, since this one, we've done another five projects, but we haven't put a, a slide together on them yet, so. Uh, first question, why, why Townsville? Everyone's probably asking. Um, we've got a few different reasons we go there. One of the reasons is the price range. So. Townsville, a lot of the properties we buy are between 150 and 250K. And when we look at the properties that, that we deal with in Brisbane, we're around the $600,000 mark. So, so for that, you know, we can do two or three full property buys with the money that we'd have to put into to one property down here. So uh, you know, a lot of them typically are 180, 160. The last one we just bought just recently was 160. So uh, we see Townsville as low risk. Uh, bottom of the property cycle. Townsville's been on a, a decline since the GFC, a bit of mining downturn, a few other things you've probably heard about Clive Palmer's plant up there shutting down the start of the year. So it, it, it hasn't actually hit its bottom yet, but it's very close to the bottom. And because we, we have watched it slide and the property prices are down where we're buying it, you see it as very low risk. Like we're uh, pretty confident with the market up there, but it can't go much lower. So to us, buying at the bottom of the market is very low risk as opposed to buying in areas of Brisbane at the moment. That are, uh, that are very high. Uh, Townsville's population is around 200,000, anywhere from 190 to 200,000. So it's got a decent um, population. It also is not reliable on one economy. It's got a big defence um, up there, both the RAF and the Army. It's um, big in hospital, um, education. Um, the mining did have an effect, but um, compared to the other pillars in the economy, it's still quite... Um, Diversified. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is the reason why we haven't seen it go like Moorumbah, Mackay, we were talking to, to Peter earlier on. Um, just and It's got those other pillars that, that maintain it. It hasn't had anything to drive it yet, but it's maintaining itself. Uh, and, and the big one that, that uh, Chris mentioned earlier, we, we did some mentoring with Jan and one of the first things we got out of that was what you know about an area, a specific area. And we lived in Townsville for 40 years before coming to Brisbane. We've been down here three and a half years. We've owned property up there for 20 years. And it highlighted just how much of the property market and the cycles that we've seen that we knew so much about it. So we thought, let's go back there and, and start looking at projects. So this is a property that we um, <coughs> saw on realestate.com. Uh, just basic details. As you can see, it's 936 square metres. It's four bedroom, which will appeal to families and investors. And it has access rear access to the yard. Yeah, and it doesn't look like much from the street, which is one of the, the bonuses for, for the properties we look at. Uh, finding the deal. This particular one came from an alert we had set up on realestate.com. Uh, a lot of the properties we buy, we don't, we don't find on realestate.com. We actually source off market. So either from agents that come to us and tell us something's, they're gonna list something that's coming up or from owners direct. But this particular one was one of the few we got off realestate.com. Uh, we made an offer on it, so I don't see we were in Brisbane. We just made an offer on it in Townsville. Uh, once that offer looked like getting close to get accepted, I actually had another couple of properties we were looking at. So I flew up, we had a look at the other couple of properties, had a look at this one and resulted in a uh, contract at 195 with just the basics. We, we try to always keep just a very simple contract, 14 days building pest and finance uh, in a 30 day settlement. We do vary that sometimes, but in a market that there isn't many buyers, we found we need to keep it very simple. If we go asking for longer settlements, uh, in, in the early days we asked for a lot of due diligence clauses, but we find it scares, scares some of the sellers off. Uh, the estimated feasibility. So basically once we'd seen it, decided we'd, we'd pay 195, we put together a, a quick feasibility on what we thought the cost would be, where it would end up. Uh, purchase price of 195. Estimated the reno cost to be around about 15,000. We specialise in cosmetic renos. We don't do structural renovations. Uh, part of our plan in very fast turnover is to not go obviously doing anything too structural. It might take time or take more capital injection. Uh, other costs, stamp duty, legals, 
holding costs, agents com, um, estimated at 220. 230 into the deal, uh, estimated sales price from our research would be around the 260 and we're pretty confident with that because by this stage, even at the end of last year, I think we did nine deals or something last year, and we're pretty confident with seeing where they were selling. Um, and that's just part of being that area expert, as John calls it. So we, we went into the deal with an expected profit of 30,000. So with the money in for it, you know, it's 13%, that fits our target. We target on, all, on our projects between 10 and 15. So it was pull the trigger, let's, let's go ahead with this one. Uh, the good points about the site, um, the location wise, it's quite central to schools, um, both private and public schools, shopping centres. It um, was very friendly to families because it was opposite a park. Um, so just met criteria through investors and family. Yep. Uh, site access on both sides of the house. And again, the large block which offered um, several options if renovation didn't go to plan. Yeah, so the core business and plan is to renovate it, get it straight back on the market. But with all of the projects we look at, we don't just look at a house to renovate, we look at other exit strategies. So things like the, the side access to a big block like that meant we could do a dual occup occupancy on it. We had no real intention of doing it, but it makes that property special to the market, which when there's so many at this time, I think there were 6,000 other houses on the market, we had to have some sort of advantage that when people looked at houses, they'd look at this one instead. And with all of our projects, we always like to make sure there's three or four at least exit strategies or something specific about it that's going to make it sell. So we're not left hanging on to it. As Lucy said, renovation, subdivision, subdivision. <laughs> dual lock. So the first challenge we found was the street. It was overgrown. Um, it was the first house into the street. So the neighbours weren't really happy how far it got overgrown. Um, and it just put buyers off as well. Uh, challenge two was the kitchen. Uh, the bonus was it's quite large. The downside was quite dated. Yeah, I guess the, the quite large is a bonus and a, and a bad point. Um, all original, but being quite large meant if you're going to put another kitchen in there, it's quite an expensive <coughs> kitchen to actually fill the space. So that was another challenge. Uh, and challenge number three, the backyard. It was actually, as mentioned before, 936 square metres and the house was up the front of the block. So when you stood at the back of the house and looked down, that's what you saw. There's actually, with 936 square metres of block, there's literally about 500 square metres of land sitting there that you can't really see because of that. So one of our you know, challenges was to how do we use that to market the property? How do we show that that land is there? Bathroom and toilet, orange bar, orange toilet. I don't really know what goes on there. Um, look, one of the good things about this, basically the bathroom was very salvageable. We didn't do much to the bathroom. Uh, it was very basic, but a, a, you know, a new vanity, very low cost, a new white shower curtain. Uh, the dining room, um, it was reasonable, but it was just dark. So it wasn't the floor coverings and the paint just didn't allow lighting. So it wasn't, um, it didn't show that it was a bright and airy place to go. Yeah, so it was actually like the house was in reasonable condition. There wasn't holes in walls, tenants hadn't damaged it. It just was dated and old, just needed a, a spruce up. Uh, the plan with it, so with, with all of our renovations, we, we set a time frame to do it. We set a basic plan on what we're going to do. Uh, Pain internal, external was, was well overdue. New floor coverings, light floor coverings to open it up, make it look a lot larger. Uh, replace the kitchen, this particular one. We, we do with a lot of them use second hands. We found a second hand kitchen that was actually more than what we required for this, for $1,500. Uh, and it, uh, you'll see it from the pictures, it, it came up very well. It was only less than five years old. Some tree lopping to try and show both the street appeal and the land in the backyard, uh, the vanity, very low cost. And we don't usually do landscaping or turf in Townsville. It's a little bit different now, it's green, but for the last few years it has been brown. Brownsville. Um, basically, uh, the whole town has been so brown that you'll drive down every street and the yard's brown, but when you look at any house for sale on realestate.com, it's got this beautiful green grass. Uh, and that's, it's, it's funny when you look at the pictures and you see the houses. So the before and after, yeah, it was just quick. A um... little, little bit swapped around, obviously, before and after. <laughs> <the other one. laughs> That's better. We had a different house on there when we did it on Tuesday night. <laughs> so. Um, so, yeah, it just got rid of the um, kind of like rubbish trees or the trees that didn't really help. It really showed off the carport, the double carport that's there, and also the um, second crossover or the second driveway, which provided access to the backyard.
Yeah, you know, there's a point in there. He had already had a second crossover and it had a five metres gap between the house and the fence. So it was easy to show people that you could access the backyard and that was its potential. Uh, the kitchen. As I said, the kitchen we got for um, $1,500 was less than five years old, but off Gumtree. A lot of our kitchens we get off Gumtree. So if people are looking for second-hand kitchens, a lot of people that, that are putting them on. Sometimes we'll put new kitchens in, it really comes down to the project. Uh, and even when we do put a new kitchen in, it's, it's our guys that do it are very affordable. But um, all up, the kitchen for 1500 our guy to fit it, and the bench tops, that whole kitchen's two and a half grand. So it's, um, yeah, it really changed the house, and I think it, it sold the house, no doubt. Uh, yeah, bathroom. Bathroom was quite simple, as Paul said. It was just basically putting a white shower curtain in compared to the um, multicoloured one that's there. Um, painted it and the new vanity, as well as just jazzed it up with some accessories like towels and um, little things on the vanity. Yeah, add a bit of colour. Yep. Add a bit of colour. Yep. Look, the, something we learned many years ago: a white, a ten-dollar white shower curtain can just change a bathroom. So, like, even when we looked at that, when we were looking at the house, I guess if the the owners had to just spend ten dollars. It just changes what you see. Little things, uh, little tricks. Uh, the lounge and dining. We continued the light floor coverings through from the kitchen, which um, really showed up the light and um, the just the different paint colour, and also um, just allowed the light through both the the side door and the window from the other side or the other um, slide door. Yeah, really, really opened it up. Showed it, made, made it to look a lot bigger than it was, which was our intention with the light colours. And the, uh, yeah, the, the furniture, so that, that furniture was never in the house, that's actual virtual furniture. So in the market we're in, and the price range we're in, if we're in Brisbane in a, a six, seven hundred thousand dollar house, you'd probably stage it, use some nice furniture. With this, with the, the profit margins we're going for, and the, and the costs, we actually get furniture digitally put into the photographs. So for $50 a photo, that that gets sent away for fifty dollars a photo. Someone goes and adds all of that furniture in, complete with shadows, everything, so it looks like it's there. And generally, with most of our properties, we'll only do three rooms. So we'll do a lounge room, one bedroom, and if it's got like an outdoor entertaining area, they'll put something there. And, and we find it gives people the concept or idea when they see it online of what could be there. And then if they come and have a look at the open house, they've already got an idea, rather than you know looking at a, a blank vacant house. So um, yeah, I don't know if if people use virtual furniture before, but it's a massive bonus, massive bonus. The backyard, yeah, with the basic tree lopping out of the centre, it um, really opened it up and showed a lot more. And the green grass, again, a bit of Photoshop. But uh, with the, uh, not just cutting down the trees in the centre, but this rock, I didn't get this to work before, this little rock garden around the side, we didn't do too much with it, but we actually moved it back a metre all the way round. It wasn't a big job, I had a couple of kids actually come and do it, um, and that really opened it up as well. Just just showed all the space, as I say, 500 square metres there. And just shows the options, like if people want to put a pool in, or a few big bay shed, shed, yeah, big um, shed. Um, or put another house down the back being dual <coughs> occupancy. Now the timeline on this. Uh, this, this particular one we <coughs> settled on the 11th of September. Uh, we started the reno, it took four weeks, most of our renos are four weeks. Sometimes we get a little bit earlier, um, get finished a bit, bit quicker. Uh, four week renovation, first open, we finished on the Friday, the first open was on the Saturday. Uh, we got an offer there at 265 and just from a little bit of negotiation we accepted a couple of days later a contract at 270 which was, we were very, very happy with, especially the, the quick contract, uh, which, yeah, 13th of November, uh, settled on that, money in the bank. So the whole project was two months, so from when our money settled on the project and we started the reno to when the money was sold and the money was back in the bank, was less than two months. Well, just on two months, yeah. And that's, that's what we aim for. We actually have a, a maximum of three months we want to hit, but a lot of our projects, the shortest one we've done has been eight days, uh, but we try to aim for the two months. And that's just controlling the systems, how well the Renault works. Uh, the actual feasibility. Purchase price was 195. We uh, always generally ask for a discount before we go unconditional. This particular case, we didn't get it, but we're happy to go ahead with the, with the purchase. Uh, reno cost was 17000 so 2000 more than what we'd first anticipated. A few little things, the kitchen was, was, uh, was a definite bonus. Uh, other costs were very close, stamp duty, legals. Total 232 sale price at $270,000. Um, this one resulted in a profit of 38000 for the two months that we had the money in. Approximately 16% in that two months. One of the joys 
of what we do with this is this project took two months and with the money in and out and back out and back in to go into another deal, basically if we can do that and roll that money into another deal straight away, you know, that, that annualised, that return over two months, basically if we can continue to use that money and keep that money busy, that's nearly 100% return on our money. And this particular money did that, it came out of this deal straight into another one. So even if we do one every three months and it makes 30k, over the, over the 12 months by rolling that money, we can just turn that 200k into 120k at the end of the year. And that's what we concentrate on and that's what, what we do for our investors. <coughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the deal. So that, that's pretty much that one. But as I say, we've done, since this we've done five, we've got two on the go at the moment. Um, and we just, we just keep rolling them. And those short time frames, uh, quick returns to investors. And uh, yeah, keep doing them, we love it. And love sharing it, so thank you. Very quick. Sorry? Are you hands on? Look at the start, I was a lot hands on when we first started doing it a few years ago. Um, certainly as we progressed last year to doing more and more projects, realised I had to step back. We got a really good team in towns where we use. So by the end of last year we were doing four projects at a time and there's no way I can, I can be hands on full on doing yeah. four projects. Uh, and, and same again, now a lot of it I do from down in Brisbane. So we'll get stuff organised, our guys will get going. Mm. Uh, got, a, got a good system going. Back yeah, back. definitely. Yeah. And another thing by being in, the, in and out of the market all the time is we can just keep our finger on the pulse. If the market's starting to change, if something's taking longer or something's selling less, we just know what we've got to adapt. Adapt our buy price, change our, our reno. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. um, did you sell the property yourself or you this, mentioned selling something over? Yeah, they were in the 20,000. So Agents Com was in that, yep. So this particular one we used an agent. Like last year, I think out of six of the nine projects we sold ourselves. Yeah. It comes back again to being hands-on. The energy putting into selling those projects was energy not put into acquiring more. Otherwise, we would have been doing a lot more projects. So yeah. it's a balance. There's a balance between the cost and the effort put into it. So yeah. So there's been a, a transition, a shift there, but you're happy to use agents a lot more now, yeah. so that I can do what we do best and acquire more property, mm -hmm. find more deals for the investors. We, we only pay as much tax as we have to. Where's Paul? <laughs> <laughs> there he is, up the back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we're, we're definitely making money here. Um, we do it in different entities too. And um, if um, one of our structures was that if we use a joint venture, it'll go in their name. And um, so we'll just do a profit share at the end. So we do have um, personal names, companies and trusts. So yeah, yeah. But a lot of the stuff, a lot of the stuff we do with investors, um, it's up to the investor how they want to do it in their name, in their entity, how they want to do it from there. So, what's um, what's the uh, rental potential rental income on these two sort of things? Yeah, look, nearly every property we do because of our buy prices and the, the money we put ends up positively cash, cash flow. So this particular one, being a four bedroom house and renovated, would have rented for about three twenty. So you can see it owed us 230 mm. uh, with the potential of a dual lock down the track. And some of the projects we keep for buy and hold, uh, basically Paul will, will back us up, I think, on this. To, to keep them in a, in a dropping, falling market is more uh, a bit of a hope for when that turnaround is. We can sort of see some triggers that are, are going to change that probably in the next 12 to 18 months. But I think I don't want to be holding on to all of them, hoping that I'm right with the, the turnaround I see coming in 12 or 18 months. So that's why we still flip. We are definitely accumulating some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Paul. Can you go back to the other side? To the other side? The other side. So when you invested, did you get bank finance at 80% <coughs> of the 195? Bank finance at? The purchase 80% of the 195. We had, this was fully funded by investors' funds. We treat interest on the whole amount at 5%. That's what we pay. Uh, we've got investors that put up a lot of the money. There, there is the option, we, we can get bank finance. We find one of the things with getting bank finance is the bank doesn't generally like you buying a property and selling it at six weeks later. <laughs> so and plus the setup fees, just the exit fees and the setup fees and the, yeah. So most certainly on anything that we're going to buy and hold, we finance at as high a rate as, as we can. 
But Couldn't you get a transportable lane? Sort of thing? You can, mm. yep, you can. Uh, basically, with, with a lot of the investors we've got, and we're always looking for more investors, means we can do more projects, is that investors that either have their own finance, set up lines of credit, access to funds, or can service loans, so we, they abide in their name and actually finance it at 80%, and then put in some cash or will do a balance. Um, there's, there's money available before we have to go and do bank set up costs and, and claw back fees for closing out early, which can, which can really hurt. You know, this one is a good profit. Some of them, if that was a $25,000 profit and you find you've got a five grand set up finance and claw back fees, that really hurts when you don't need to do that when investor funds are available. Look, we find that the, the properties we target, most of our renos range between 12 and 20,000. So 15 is on average what we do. In saying that, we do do some other projects. One of the projects we did last year had a $60,000 reno. Yeah, so it was a different reno again, still not structural, yep. but obviously managed to buy it at a very, very good price yep. because of its condition. And any variation between Townsville and Brisbane? Brisbane's a rising market, Townsville's a declining market. Oh, in the red oh, cost. Sorry, in the sorry. cost. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty confident like, the cost. The guys I use are very good, very good price. Yep. Um, I think down here, as you start to know people better and get those prices, I think for what we do, basically painting, yeah. I think we get them very similar. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. But the uh, oh, yeah. sorry. sorry, you're right. Sorry. How do you attract your investors? Uh, we come to networking groups <laughs> <laughs> and, and share what we do with their money. So that's one of the biggest things. Kevin touched on it before. There's so much potential in this room. People that are looking to invest, people that are looking to do deals, looking to learn how to do deals. Um, we find, most of our investors we find from networking groups. Yeah. And we've got family that want to invest with us. I'm very cautious about having family invest with us. So that, that's a balance. But um, yeah, there's, there's plenty of investors looking to get a much better return than the 2% they're getting in the bank. Yeah. And, yeah, the reason, one of the reasons these we're doing so many now is because of the short time frames, the high returns, the low risk. Um, we find people are always looking, always looking to get involved. And certainly anyone who is looking to get involved, please, we've got cards, we'll be up the back. Come and have a chat to us. I'm just wondering, when you're talking about investors, are you talking about JV or finances? Both. Private finances? Yeah, both. So the last one we did, um, they put up the money and we just offered them a percentage return per month. Yeah, so we do either, either loans or cash financing or JVs, and that we structure that with each individual person differently. Mm. Yep. Look, all depends on the deal. All depends on the deal and what that person's putting in. So if we're doing a JV and someone's just putting the money in or just getting the bank finance, then we'll sit down and look at the figures for that deal and we'll work out a percentage based on that. So the last one was uh, 65.35 that we did. So the investor is very happy to sit back and not actually have anything to do with it. Just put the money up and get their money back. Sorry, thank you. Here we're getting the, the roundup up there. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much again. Great questions. Love sharing. Yeah.